a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Easy E. Eric Lynn Wright, better known by his stage name Easy E, was an American rapper, record producer, and entrepreneur. Dubbed the godfather of gangster rap, he gained extreme notoriety for his work with N.W.A., where he has been credited for pushing the boundaries of lyrical and visual content in mainstream popular music. Born and raised in Compton, Easy E faced several legal troubles before founding the Ruthless Records record label in 1986. After beginning a short solo career, where he worked heavily with Ice Cube and Dr. Dre, the trio came together to form the group N.W.A. later that year. As a member of the group, he released the controversial album, Straight Outta Compton, which tackled many socio-political issues. The album has been regarded as one of the greatest albums of all time, and one of the most influential in the genre. The group released their final studio album three years later, and disbanded shortly after. Due to long-standing financial disputes, Easy e then resumed his solo career, where he released two EPs, which drew inspiration from funk music, contemporary hip-hop, and comedians. He also engaged in a high-profile feud with Dr. Dre, before being hospitalized with AIDS in 1995. He died a month after his hospitalization. Early Life and Ruthless Records Investment Eric Wright was born to Richard and Kathy Wright on September 7, 1964 in Compton, California, a Los Angeles suburb notorious for gang activity and crime. His father was a postal worker, and his mother was a grade school administrator. Wright dropped out of high school in the 10th grade, but later received a high school general equivalency diploma. Wright supported himself primarily by selling drugs. Introduced to the occupation by his cousin, Wright's friend Jerry Heller admits that he witnessed Wright selling marijuana but says that he never saw him sell cocaine. As Heller noted in his book Ruthless, a memoir, Wright's dope dealer label was part of his self-forged dharma. Wright was also labeled as a thug. Heller explains, the hood where he grew up was a dangerous place. He was a small guy. Thug was a role that was widely understood on the street. It gave you a certain level of protection in the sense that people hesitated to fuck with you. Likewise, Dope Dealer was a role that accorded you certain privileges and respect. In 1986, at the age of 22, Wright had allegedly earned as much as $250,000 from dealing drugs. However, after his cousin was shot and killed, he decided that he could make a better living in the Los Angeles hip-hop scene, which was growing rapidly in popularity. He started recording songs during the mid-1980s in his parents' garage. The original idea for Ruthless Records came when Wright asked Heller to go into business with him. Wright suggested a half-ownership company. But it was later decided that Wright would get 80% of the company's income and Heller would only get 20%. According to Heller, he told Wright, Every dollar comes into Ruthless, I take 20 cents. That's industry standard for a manager of my caliber. I take 20, you take 80%. I am responsible for my expenses and you're responsible for yours. You own the company. I work for you. Along with Heller. Wright invested much of his money into Ruthless Records. Heller claims that he invested the first $250,000 and would eventually put up to $1 million into the company. NWA and Easy Does It, 1986-91 NWA's original lineup consisted of Arabian Prince, Dr. Dre, Easy e and Ice Cube. DJ Yella and MC Ren joined later. The compilation album NWA and the Posse was released on November 6, 1987, and would go on to be certified gold in the United States. The album featured material previously released as singles on the McCola Records label, which was responsible for distributing the releases by NWA and other artists like the Feel Fresh Crew, a West Coast rap group originally based in Dallas, Texas. Easy's debut album, Easy Does It, was released on September 16, 1988, and featured 12 tracks. It was labeled as West Coast Hip Hop, Gangster Rap and Golden Age Hip Hop. It has sold over 2.5 million copies in the United States and reached number 41 on the Billboard 200. 
The album was produced by Dr. Dre and DJ Yeller and largely written by MC Ren. Ice Cube and the DOC both Glenn Boyd from the Seattle Post Intelligencer and MTV's John Wiederhorn claimed that Easy Does It paved the way for NW's most controversial album. Straight Outta Compton, Wright's only solo in the album was a remix of the song, Eight Ball, which originally appeared on NWA and the Posse. The album featured Wright's writing and performing. He performed on seven songs and helped write four songs. After the release of Straight Outta Compton, Ice Cube left because of internal disputes and the group continued as a four-piece ensemble. NWA released 100 Miles and Runnin' and Niggas for Life in 1991. A diss war started between NWA and Ice Cube when 100 Miles and Runnin' and Real Niggas were released. Ice Cube responded with No Vaseline on Death Certificate. Wright performed on seven of the 18 songs on Niggas for Life. In March 1991 Wright accepted an invitation to a lunch benefiting the Republican Senatorial Inner Circle, hosted by then U.S. President George H.W. Bush. A spokesman for the rapper said that Easy e supported Bush because of his performance in the Persian Gulf War. End of NWA and feud with Dr. Dre, 1991-94 NWA began to split up after Jerry Heller became the band's manager. Dr. Dre recalls, the split came when Jerry Heller got involved. He played the divide and conquer game. Instead of taking care of everybody, he picked one nigger to take care of and that was easy. And easy was like, I'm taken care of, so fuck it. Dre sent Suge Knight to look into Easy's financial situation, because he was beginning to grow suspicious of Easy and Heller. Dre asked Easy to release him from the Ruthless Records contract, but Easy refused. The ampas led to what reportedly transpired between Knight and Easy at the recording studio where Niggas for Life was recorded. After he refused to release Dre, Knight declared to Easy that he had kidnapped Heller and was holding him prisoner in a van. The rumor did not convince Easy to release Dre from his contract and Knight threatened Easy's family. Knight gave Easy a piece of paper that contained Easy's mother's address, telling him, I know where your mama stays. Easy finally signed Dre's release, officially ending NWA. The feud with Dr. Dre continued after a track on Dre's The Chronic. Dre Day contained lyrics that insulted Easy. E Easy responded with the EP. It's on 187 Micrometers Killer, featuring the tracks, Real Motherfucking G's. And, it's on. The album, which was released on October 25, 1993, contains pictures of Dre wearing, lacy outfits and makeup, when he was a member of the Electro Hop World Class Wrecking Crew. Personal Life Wright had a son, Eric Darnell Wright, in 1984. He also had a daughter named Erin who has legally changed her name to Ebi. Wright also has five other children by five separate women during his life. Wright met Tomoka Woods at the Los Angeles nightclub in 1991 and they married in 1995, 12 days before his death. They had a son named Dominic and a daughter named De. After Wright's death, Ruthless Records was taken over by his wife. Legal Issues After Dr. Dre left Ruthless Records, executives Mike Klein and Jerry Heller sought assistance from the Jewish Defense League. Klein, a former Ruthless Records director of business affairs, said this provided Ruthless Records with leverage to enter into negotiations with Death Row Records over Dr. Dre's departure. While Knight had sought an outright release from Ruthless Records for Dr. Dre, the Jade, and Ruthless Records management negotiated a release in which the record label would continue to receive money and publishing rights from future Dr. Dre projects with Death Row Records founded by Dr. Dre with Suge Knight. The FBI launched a money laundering investigation under the assumption that the Jadel was extorting money from Ruthless Records to fight their causes. This led to Jadel spokesperson Irv Rubin issuing a press release stating, there was nothing but a close, tight relationship between Easy e and the organization. An FBI inquiry began in 1996 and was closed in 1999 with a finding that the allegations could not be substantiated. 
The declassified FBI file was released to the public on the FBI's website, The Vault, part of the FOIA library. Illness and Death On February 24, 1995, Wright was admitted to the Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles with what he believed to be asthma due to a recurring cough and wincing that occurred beginning in July 1994. Instead, he was diagnosed with AIDS. He announced his illness in a public statement on March 16, 1995. It is believed Wright contracted the infection from a sexual partner. During the week of March 20, having already made amends with Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, he drafted a final message to his fans. On March 26, 1995 Eazy-E died from complications of AIDS, one month after his diagnosis. He was 30 years old. Despite the fact that most reports at the time said he was 31 due to the falsification of his date of birth by one year, he was buried on April 7, 1995 at Rose Hills Memorial Park in Whittier, California. Over 3,000 people attended his funeral, including Jerry Heller and DJ Yeller. He was buried in a gold casket, and instead of wearing a suit and tie, Eazy-E was dressed in a flannel shirt, a Compton hat and jeans. On January 30, 1996, Ten months after Easy's death, his final album, Straight Off Our Streets of Motherfucking Compton was released. According to his son Lil Easy E, Easy e was worth an estimated USD $50 million at the time of his death. Musical influences and style Our music cites Easy's influences as Ice T, Red Fox, Tupac Shakur, King T, Bootsy Collins, Run DMC Richard Pryor. The Egyptian Lover, Schooly D, Too Short, Prince, The Sugar Hill Gang, and George Clinton. In the documentary The Life and Times of Eric Wright, Easy e mentions collaborating with many of his influences. When reviewing Straight Off the R Streets of Motherfucking Compton, Stephen Thomas Early Wine noted, Easy e sounds revitalized, but the music simply isn't imaginative. Instead of pushing forward and creating a distinctive style, it treads over familiar gangster territory, complete with bottomless space, whining synthesizers, and meaningless boasts. When reviewing Easy Does It, Jason Birchmeyer of All Music said, In terms of production, Dr. Dre and YLML together P-Funk, Def Jam style hip-hop, and the leftover electro sounds of mid-80s Los Angeles, creating a dense, funky, and thoroughly unique style of their own. Birchmeyer described Easy's style as dense, unique and funky, and said that it sounded absolutely revolutionary in 1988. Several members of NWA wrote lyrics for Reezy Does It, Ice Cube, the DOC and MC Ren. The episode 5150, Home Fourth Arsic features a song written by Naughty by Nature. The track, Merry Motherfucking Christmas, features Menage a Trois, Buckwheat, and Atban Clan as guest vocalists, and, Neighborhood Sniper. Features Cocaine as a guest vocalist. It's on 187 Micrometers Killer features several guest vocalists, including Gangster Dresster, BG Knockout. Cocaine, Cold 187 Micrometers, Rhythm D, and Dirty Red. Straight Off the Streets of Motherfucking Compton featured several guest vocalists, including BG Knockout, Gangster Dresta, Silky Fine, Dirty Red, Menage a Trois, Roger Troutman and XNWA members MC Ren and DJ Yeller. Legacy Easy has been called the godfather of gangster rap MTV's Reed Shaheem said that Easy was a rap pioneer, and he is sometimes cited by critics as a legend. Steve Huey of All Music said that he was one of the most controversial figures in gangster rap. Since his 1995 death, many book and video biographies have been produced, including 2002's The Day Easy e Died and Dead and Gone. When Easy was diagnosed with AIDS, many magazines like Jet, Vibe, Billboard, The Crisis, and Newsweek covered the story and released information on the topic. All of his studio albums, and EPs charted on the Billboard 200, and many of his singles, Easy Does It, We Want Easy, Real Motherfucking G's, and Just Ta Let You Know, also charted in the US. In 2012 a Easy E documentary was released by Ruthless Propaganda, 
called Ruthless Memories. The documentary featured interviews from Jerry Heller, MC Ren and BG Knockout, in the 2015 film Straight Outta Compton. Easy is played by Jason Mitchell and the film is dedicated in his memory. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?